Good morning on this Tuesday day, and I'm glad that you took the time to dial in or to watch us here at Friendship United Methodist Church. This is our ongoing Bible study that's entitled Friends Under Construction. And so what I'd like to do today is get started with two hymns. Uh, I myself is a, I'm a little bit dragging and trying to get things organized a little bit better. And John's up there managing me, so I'm grateful for that. So I'm going to sing two hymns for you to get started. The first one is Be Thou My Vision. And then right after that, I'm going to move into My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Then my faith looks up to thee. Savior, did 
Today, we're going to be looking at Friends Under Construction. This is our 11th chapter of the study. We actually have two more chapters to go through. This one is entitled Friends of the Moment. Now, you know, we're coming up on another presidential campaign, an election year, if you want to call it that. More than just a presidential election, there's going to be others running for office. And it seems to me that every time we enter into the final months of an election year, there seems to be a lot made of each candidate and who their friends are, who their companions are, who they are and how much they sway the candidate's decision-making process. Now, it is interesting that many candidates seem to drop some of their friends if they are viewed as a liability to their election hopes. I guess we could call that kind of friendship friends of the moment. These are the kinds of friendships where a friend, when they become a liability, when they become a hindrance, when they become non-supportive or questioning of the candidate's motives are dropped. They're simply just dropped, let go, and then viewed oftentimes as an enemy to the candidate's cause, whatever that cause may be, of course. Friends are not to be a means to an end. Friends are to be the end. Friends are to be forever. Now let's look at some interesting relationships that the Bible points out to us. First, let's think about the relationship that existed between Pilate and Herod. Now, some call their relationship a provisional friendship. Now, provisional friendships are not uncommon. A common cause can bring together persons who otherwise would never choose to be friends. Y'all remember the old saying I do, politics makes strange bedfellows. Well, I want to share with you from the Gospel of Luke. So if you've got your Bibles, we're looking at Luke chapter 22, verse 66, and then running through verse 23, Verse 12. So let me get this up here. So again, I'm looking at Luke chapter 22, starting with the 66 verse and running through chapter 23, verse 12. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people both the chief priests and teachers of the law met together. And Jesus was led before them. Now this is Jesus coming before Pilate and Herod before the crucifixion. If you are the Christ, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I ask you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the Almighty God. And they all asked, are you then the Son of God? And Jesus replied, you are right in saying that I am. And then they said, why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off the pilot. They began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Christ, a king. And so it was Pilate who asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? 
Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priest and the crowd, I find no bias for a charge against this man. But they insisted. He stirs up the people all over Judea. And by his teaching, he started in Galilee and has come all the way here. Now on hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Now when Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform some miracle. So he plied him with many questions. But Jesus gave him no answer. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, and they were vehemently accusing him. And then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. And dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. Note verse 12. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. This is a classic example to all of us a classic example of provisionary friends that verse 12 again let me say it that day Herod and Pilate became friends before this they had been enemies now these two rulers had the same problem it was Jesus what should they do with this alleged disturber of the peace now let's remember that Pilate and Herod were also rivals. They were vying with each other for Rome's favor. And under ordinary circumstances, no love was lost between these two. Yet at this moment in time, Luke calls them friends, a common if overly generous misuse of the term because their friendship grew because of a common cause, and that was Jesus Christ. Now, they were never really friends. Their alliance will not last. Joined for the moment in their political dilemma concerning what to do with Jesus Christ and how to deal with the people, these antagonists have a common enemy. A common enemy in that they were worried about their positions. And that common enemy united them for the moment. Oh, they will like each other as long as it takes to get accomplished what each one wants accomplished, and then they will be friends no more. This is one of the reasons, the least commendable one, for the old complaint of leaders that it's lonely at the top. Loneliness is guaranteed to anyone who chooses friends on the basis of their usefulness. A solitary life, even one surrounded by people, is guaranteed when you use your friends to get what you want. To manipulate your relationships to your own advantage. To strike a bargain with anybody who will help you get what you desire. And then, when you have everything arranged to your profit, most of the times, the friendships end. You get rid of your friends and enjoy the success you had with their help. Now let's look at another relationship. Let's look at our Lord's relationship, Jesus' relationship with the one who betrayed him. We're going to look at Judas and Jesus. Now Judas, he employed this idea of using friends to get what you want to perfection. And you can even see him doing that with Jesus Christ. We are not 100% sure as to what led Judas to betray Jesus, but we believe that he became disillusioned since Judas himself was considered to be a super patriot by all those around him. Judas wanted Jesus to lead a violent revolution against the Romans. 
when he realized that that was not going to happen, he betrayed Jesus with 30 pieces of silver. Now, what was the sign to those that night in the garden as he brought the guards, as he was about to betray Jesus? What was the sign that he was going to use to tell them who Jesus was? Well, Judas kissed our Lord. Now, the kiss between friends was a sign of friendship. So whatever the reason was for his betrayal, he sold out our friend, he sold out our Lord, and he sought his own advantage in the transaction. He grabbed the silver, and he watched for his opportunity, and then he betrayed Jesus the Christ. Now for this deed, the great poet Dante consigned Judas to the very innermost core of hell. Dante's inspired imagination could not conceive of anything or any one worse in history than Judas, the betrayer of our Lord. Now, on a much more personal level, is there anything worse we can imagine than to have a trusted friend turn against us after using us? Doesn't that hurt? Doesn't that cut us to the quick? But what right do we have to believe the same thing will not happen to us? Because sometimes we use friendships to our own advantage as well. When friends are a means to an end, and when the end is getting what we want, it seems that there is no limit to the extent that we will go to get what we want in this modern culture age. Now, friends of the moment are not really friends at all. You know that. They're not going to stick with you. They're not going to stand up with you. They're not going to take the test of time and pass it. The truth is right here in front of us. People who live by manipulation cannot, in the end, be friends. We see that in politics. You cannot trust them in anything except what is to their own advantage. Now, this is not a new discovery. We've seen this down through the years. We've experienced it in our own living. Some of our scriptures even lament the loss of fair weather friends. To be bereft of friends is the essence of desolation. Excuse me. So for some people, the only type of friendships they have are those that are for a purpose and for a season. One could easily be tempted to wonder whether friendship truly is possible because of the way we live in our society today. Who is trustworthy enough to be a friend? On whom can one count in the day of trouble? Well, let's, let's back up. Let's look at this relationship again between Jesus and Judas. Let's go back to the Last Supper. Let's go back and consider what's taking place there between Jesus and Judas. Now let's remember, Jesus had spent three years with these disciples. Judas was there when Jesus taught. Judas experienced his fellowship. Judas accepted our Lord's hospitality. Judas allowed Jesus to even wash his feet and in every other way receive blessings from Jesus the Christ. And yet Judas turns around and returns all this, returns the favors done to him, the blessings he received, with the betrayal and with the death of Jesus. How can friendship with such a person be possible? It cannot. How can you trust yourself to a person who is all take and no give? But let's consider our friend Jesus. Now, in spite of what Jesus knows of Judas's frailties, Jesus keeps on giving of himself to him. Jesus does not allow Judas's weaknesses to dilute his own strength. Because there is one betrayer in the group, Jesus does not withhold friendship either from him or from the other eleven. Jesus will be betrayed, but not by all of them. 
Yes, the rest will disappoint him in his hour of greatest need, but they will not disappoint him forever. They may in their panic fail to act as friends should, but he does not renounce the friendship or even give up on these particular friends. They may waver and they may stumble in their friendship with Jesus Christ, but Jesus will not betray them. He will not let them drop. He will not give up on them, nor will he give up on us. So let's move ahead a little bit. Let's look at the relationship between Jesus and Peter. If you should have any doubt about the unconditional quality of Jesus' friendship, then we need to really look at John chapter 21. And I'll read that in a little bit. Peter and some of the other disciples have spent the night fishing, but they didn't have any success. And early in the morning, Jesus is standing on the shore, and Jesus calls to them in these words. He says, friends, haven't you any fish? And that's in the fifth verse of the 21st chapter of John. You know, I never appreciated what Jesus said there. He called them friends. Now, I do not know of any other occasion where Jesus greeted them this way. The disciples had deserted him, and yet he still called them friends. Jesus' special concern, of course, was for Peter. The most moving scene of reconciliation takes place along the shore here after Jesus has helped his friends find that extraordinary large catch of fish. Following the meal, Jesus leads Peter through this personal ritual of reconciliation. Now let's open up our Bibles now to the 21st chapter of John. We're looking at John chapter 21. Let me get my pages in order. John 21, I want to pick it up in the 15th verse through the 19th verse. Now in some Bibles, there's a little subheading here. My Bible says Jesus reinstates Peter. Now, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. And again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? And once again, Peter answered. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And again, Jesus said, take care of my sheep. And then the third time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And so he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went there, went wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Now, Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Now, three times Peter had denied the Lord. We know that story. Now his Lord gives him three opportunities to wipe away the denials. This time, though, Jesus insists that words will not be enough. Peter must follow and do. Peter must obey. Peter must take care of the dependent ones that Jesus is leaving behind. 
In Jesus' hour of trial, Peter's friendship proved untrue. But Jesus' friendship has never wavered. Jesus wants his friend Peter to be with him now and forever. You know, the mark of a true friend is trustworthiness. In most cases, you can choose about whether you want to be a friend or not with someone. But a trustworthy person makes friends and takes care of their friends even when they are betrayed or are let down. Jesus stuck with Peter, forgave Peter, had patience with Peter. Now Paul himself writes in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 25. Paul writes, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor. For we are all members of one body. You see, if we don't, the only friends that we will ever have will be friends of the moment. We all want friends that will last. That will last for all times, last for eternity. And so we have to make wise choices and we have to think about our friends. And we also got to realize that when we put ourselves out there to join with someone in friendship, we must ask ourselves, are we really going to follow through? Are we really going to be trustworthy? Are we really going to be a person that this friend can count on? Or are we only going to be that fair weather friend? Or a friend of the moment? Friendships are special. The friendship we have with Jesus Christ is special. And I hope it's not a friendship for you of the moment, but I hope you have accepted Christ as your friend and know that you can trust him to be with you through all things. Friends of the moment, they will leave us. They will abandon us. And sometimes we will abandon them. But a true friend stays the course through the ups, the downs, the betrayals, and the disappointments. Let's thank God for all of our true friends. Now let's thank God for the one great true friend, Jesus Christ. Can we bow our heads for a moment of prayer? Well, gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. Whether it be sitting at home or whether it be watching, we're here, Lord. We're together. We're connected. And we want to grow in our friendship with you, Almighty God. We want to grow in our friendship with one another. So, Lord, bless us. Help us. Strengthen us. And let us know that when those difficult times come, Lord, you will not forsake us. Now we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to attempt to share with you two more hymns. Uh, the next hymn I'd like to do is More Love to Thee. More love to be. Thank you. 
One more. I'm going to go right over and do open my eyes that I may see. Next week, we're going to be talking about, can't we still be friends? Looking a little bit at Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter. But until then, it is my prayer that you stay safe and just stay healthy in these, in these troubling times. Let us be prayer warriors. Let us lift up one another. 
Let us do all that we can to make our neighbors safe, our world a better place. So now, my friends, may the love of God, may the peace of Jesus Christ, and may the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you until we meet again. Thanks be to God. Amen.